In little more than nine months, Lee Clark has suddenly found himself the latest successor in the line that stretches back from Chris Waddle to Peter Beardsley and then Paul Gascoigne. These were genuine local heroes who went on to establish themselves as stars on the international stage. Now this 20-year-old lad from Wall's End has proved he has the potential to live alongside the very best creative footballers, not just in the North East, but in the entire country. Lee Clark had the right pedigree for stardom. He was quite outstanding as a member of England schoolboys and duly got his Newcastle debut under Jim Smith. But the former United boss insisted his short-term needs at the time called for experience, not youth. When Ozzy Ardiles took over, Clark felt his passing game would be appreciated more and the youngster was one of a number of up-and-coming players who enjoyed first-team chances. But he had to prove himself all over again when Kevin Keegan took charge. Like Smith before him, the new manager seemed to lean towards experience. Clark started just two of United's final 16 games of last season. But Clark got the assurances about his future he was looking for and was in the opening lineup for the new season. And after that, nobody could shift him. Yeah, when Kemp first came as manager, he plumped for experience uh, to avoid the relegation battle. And uh, he was proved right in the end, but uh, thankfully I'm in the side now. Was that hard to take at the time? Very much so, you know, I'd had a bit of a run in the first team and uh, being a jolt lad, it was, it was a great honour to play at Newcastle, but uh, I was out the side and it's just something I had to accept. Now what about in the summer, did you have a bit of a chat with him to try and sort out your future? Yeah, most definitely, I just wanted uh, reassurances that I had a future in Newcastle United and he was very adamant that I did and uh, that was good enough for me really. Clark grabbed the opportunity handed to him in the most positive style. By the end of the season, he was the North East Footballer of the Year. But in the opening games, he was playing for his place. He scored on the first Saturday of the season, working himself into a good position and finding the net with not the greatest finish of the season. The following weekend, in Newcastle's impressive win at Derby, Clark was on the score sheet again. Once more, he had some degree of cooperation from the goalkeeper. But it was the all-action, inventive approach work that signposted the season ahead for young Clark. Clark wasn't just revelling in the attacking style Newcastle were displaying. It soon became evident he was one of the principal influences behind that record-breaking start to the season. Against West Ham, in another convincing display against pre-season promotion favourites, Clark's running cut through a defence. The end product might not have been there, but David Kelly was. In only Newcastle's fourth league game, Clark had scored three goals. Against Luton, it was another case of the irresistible force. Clark was perhaps not the finished article, but he certainly took some holding down. It wasn't the youngster's success in front of goal that was really proving so eye-catching. It was more his constant movement and devastating running off the ball that opened up so many attacking options for the team. Clark's strengths were no better illustrated than in his central contribution to two of United's goals of the season. Clopton losing out to Lee Clark, who was too quick for him. And Clark's carried on a great run. Kelly is pointing where he wants it. It's come deep for Mickey Quinn. Mickey Quinn scores for Newcastle. Quinn is back. Great skills from Cole. Clark's cross is spot on. And Kelly's header couldn't have been better. Goal number 23 for the number nine. On both occasions, it was Clark's running that paved the way. In the first against Portsmouth, he nicked the ball away from the opposition to start the move going. A touch for Kevin Sheedy, and then Clark was off and away. Not many players could have delivered the return ball so perfectly. No wonder Sheedy's left foot was nicknamed the wand, but Clark looked up, declined the option of laying the ball into Kelly's path near post, choosing instead to swing the cross first time, deeper, and for Mickey Quinn to finish off in classic style. Six months later, a similar goal was served up for David Kelly. This time, Andy Cole released Clark. Opposite flank now, but the midfield player's cross with the right foot was just as instinctive, just as deadly, and another brilliant goal. In between all that, there were occasions when you might have wondered if he would ever find the net himself.
But all through a lean goal-scoring spell of three months, Clark was creating the chances for others through the variety and sheer enthusiasm of his football. His own wait for a fourth goal came to an end in a disappointing defeat at lowly Oxford just after Christmas. There was still plenty to savour in the moment itself. The perfect controlling touch and an effective finish made to look too simple almost. Clark was maturing by the game and growing in confidence if that was possible for one of life's naturally cheeky chappies. He certainly seemed to have a numbing effect on opposing goalkeepers. But his goals always seemed a natural celebration of his talent and the fans absolutely loved it. Clark was soon the only ever present. Even Keegan joked he must have run a million miles for the club, and the boss knew a thing or two about perpetual motion. But in full flight, Clark was awesome. Midfield players who can score goals are always priceless. But it was Clark's all-round contribution that won him his North Footballer of the Year titles. The day after his principal award, he celebrated with his cleanest strike of the season. Even his schoolboy hero, another Wallsend boy, Peter Beardsley, would have saluted that one.